Towards the end of my, of my doctorate degree, as I wrote up my thesis on the clinical epidemiology of um, HIV TB co-infection, I noticed that for patients with HIV and with TB, I'd actually missed the fact that at least a quarter of them were either overweight or obese, and therefore at a high risk of, if not already diagnosed with diabetes. Now that got me thinking that actually what we're seeing here is changing pattern of population health with coexisting in chronic infectious and chronic non-communicable diseases. Why is this important? Well, some of these diseases interact. We know that diabetes increases your risk of TB by two to threefold. We know that some HIV drugs increase your risk of diabetes. But I've noticed that we hadn't really got any data on how all these diseases interacted. So in addition, in general, I was started studying um, how chronic infectious and non-communicable diseases interact. But um, specifically, I was looking at HIV, TB, and diabetes, and we will actually be publishing um, some results from that uh, soon. But just as importantly, um, it reminded me of my experience with Tandy and how the factors that were not strictly considered health influenced her health. And at that point, I did pause and I did look up and notice the cliff which was the environment from which she came and to which she returned that significantly contributed to her health. These were environments that limited her ability to embrace health-promoting behaviors. At that point, I realized the tools of a clinician are essentially to take a patient's history and to give them advice, individual advice on what they must do. For example, open the window, even in winter, mind, to prevent TB transmission. But this essentially makes the patient the sole person responsible for managing the illness, for getting better, for preventing disease, in spite of the upstream um, living and working conditions that are contributing to, to them being ill in the first place. And the poor were hardest hit. And it got me thinking, this is as much a disease of poor design as poor income. So I decided that I would need to swim, go upstream to address some of these um, issues. And in doing so, I noticed a recurring challenge. In discussions with um, colleagues from non-health sectors, there was never any disagreement that health is important. But asking an architect what, what you're doing about TB to prevent TB seemed like a crazy question when their priority was to deliver the most number of houses under budget. Whilst health was nice to have, and they agreed, but with competing interests and objectives, they simply had to make the bottom line work. But what if it's the wrong bottom line? What if the true cost of housing, for example, incorporated the cost of disease associated with um, urban exposures such as overcrowding, um, exposure to extreme weather, um, and poor ventilation? And I realized we don't actually have any data on this in this setting. Even though what I was seeing was essentially some health interventions, like urban upgrades to increase, um, improve accessibility to the clinic um, and improve mobility. But without the data, we're essentially guessing what would work to improve health without the real means of measuring the effect and the actual effect of, of these interventions on health and on, on disease prevention. So, in response to this gap, I got to work establishing the research initiative um, on, of Cities Health and Equity, otherwise known as REACH. So REACH is essentially a collaboration of, of academics and um, supported by some uh, partners in government across different sectors. And what essentially we're doing is redefining the question so that we can look at how health can be, become a measurement that's tracked across sectors that don't normally track it. One of the research questions that we're asking at the moment 
um, in partnership with the Department for Human Settlements in the Western Cape, is looking at how health can be incorporated, so health metrics can be incorporated into housing strategic planning and objectives. So that actually when we develop interventions together, we can measure the true impact on health and on disease prevention. Um, now we chose housing because we know that urbanization um, has significant in influence on both housing and health. Additional research that we're planning um, includes developing and evaluating interventions to both address the food insecurity and um, promote healthy behaviours with a focus on adolescents and women. Now we focused on women because we know that the health of women pre-pregnancy influences the adult health of their offspring. So this makes them a really important group to target for, for health promoting, promoting activities. And instead of leaving the patients as the passive recipients for, for these interventions, we seek to actively engage with, with, with patients. So what could, would it be if, as researchers, we decide what, what being healthy and feeling well means like, mean, feels like if the community disagrees? So we're actually um, seeking to co-create knowledge with the community um, to develop an indices of wellness against which we will measure the effectiveness of interventions. Now this accomplishes two things. Firstly, it turns the patient and the community from the problem, i.e. doesn't open the window, to one of a co-provider of solutions. And secondly, it uh, shifts the focus of disease prevention from the individual to the upstream factors that influence health. Now, this is not to say that health objectives supersede all, but that by creating common health goals across sectors, we can start to identify health generating objectives and strategies. At RISH, we seek to investigate how to move beyond this cubicle siloed sectors to addressing the causes of the causes of ill health. We are asking how can we create health in urban areas instead of just managing disease. Now, this approach is not without its challenges. Um, funding this kind of intersectoral work is challenging because the existing funding mechanisms exist in this siloed, um, uh, siloed uh, models and mechanisms. Also, this kind of research um, needs a lot of population data, which is often not available. And so there is a need for extensive and often costly data collection. But why is this important? Well, Africa is urbanizing faster than anywhere um, else on the continent. And with that comes these exposure, urban exposures that can be detrimental to, to health if we don't address them in a, in a systematic way. And I believe that by changing the perspective to address the upstream determinants, and by changing the measurement to incorporate health measurements um, across different sectors, we can change um, the outcome and de um, improve health, health equity in urban areas. So this is the challenge that I would like, that I am addressing, and um, I would like to invite you to speak to me during this week or afterwards, and I will be happy to discuss how you can participate and how you can contribute and support this initiative. I thank you.